Good morning, Gladwin Free Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here. We're glad you, you uh, made it in, to, and we want to welcome you. We want to welcome those of you who are online or listening. We sure appreciate that. Um, it's good to be together in the house of the Lord to praise Him and to worship Him. So I want to start this way. God is good. All the time. And all the time. I want to pray, then um, we have a few announcements for you before our call to worship. So let's pray together. Father, we know that um, none of us are here by mistake today, but you have um, brought us here. You've allowed us to be here to lift up your name. And Lord, I pray today you would help us to lean into all that you have for us. Lord, we know that we, um, we are in need of hearing from you, so we just pray that you would help us to give you our full attention this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I do want to share with you this morning as our call to worship, uh, Psalm 33, verses 1 through 9. And it reads this, Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning for, uh, wow, just everything. To, uh, to think of the reality of your creation and a little bit more of uh, the details, the uh, perfection with which you uh, set all this in motion uh, is amazing. And Lord, as we experience our days and take so much for granted, uh, may we see in the midst of creation that which you've created may we see you as creator uh, and be able to stand in awe of you not just this morning uh, but moment by moment day by day as we look around and see fellow humans and we see the amazing scenes in nature uh, and uh, we learn things like how you create the perfect home with food and so on and so forth uh, for that uh, that, that newly uh, formed infant uh, that's going to come to life and enter this world, uh, as we learn these things, may we just go, wow, God, you are amazing, uh, and behold you. Uh, Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray one more time. Father, I ask today you'd help me to handle your word in a correct way. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would teach us, that you would move and you would kindle a fire of love in each of our hearts this morning. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we're, uh, we're continuing in the, in the series, uh, Grace and Truth. And um, if you are interested, we have a little book that I've been referring to often called Grace and Truth by Dr. Brent Ellis. Um, we have some copies of these available. Already. There's a free um, download you can download and read an electronic version if you like as well, but it's a good little tool to add and to, and to read and to help you um, grow in your walk with the Lord, and I just uh, encourage you in that to, to check that out. But uh, um, the series of that we're, the passage of Scripture we're going to each week as we go through this series is in the Gospel of John in the first chapter, which begins with the words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Then later on in verse um, 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. As we've been going through this series um, and, and progressing through this series and looking into God's Word, we have looked at the truth that Jesus is everything He claimed to be. That Jesus 
loves us so much that he left the splendor of heaven and came to this world that he made, that he created, because he loves us. And he, was, he took on flesh. He was fully God and fully man and with, moved in with us, lived with us, walked with us. So we can see and understand better the nature and character of God and understand his attributes. We know when we read in the Bible and we think about Jesus, we find that the evidence and consistencies of Jesus' claims are consistent and they're true. Historic books and um, affirm for us that Jesus, and in fact, did live. And they affirm for us that Jesus was and is, in fact, honest and consistent. And as you study things and as we look deeply into it, it is reasonable to conclude that Jesus is, in fact, all that he claimed to be. He is the Lord of all things. He is over all. That's foundational. We need to know that. We have also looked into the reality that the Bible is indeed the Word of God. However you have it, whether you have it bound between leather or hardback or paperback or downloaded on your Bible or wherever, it's the inspired Word of God. And it's true. Christians sometimes say to me, I sure wish God would say something to me. I wish He would talk to me. And I think, He does. And the more we understand the Word of God, the more we find that we can hear God. We will understand what he wants of us. We'll understand uh, what is right. Last week, as I was sharing about the Word of God and about the Bible, I intended to share with you um, some words from the Free Methodist Discipline that affirms the importance of the Word of God. And I want to take a moment. I don't want to miss doing this. I want to take a moment. I just want to share with you what... uh, what the discipline of, a free method, of the Free Methodist Church says about the Word of God, I think you'll find it encouraging. It says the Bible is God's written Word, uniquely inspired by the Holy Spirit. It bears unerring witness to Jesus Christ, the living Word. As attested by the early church and subsequent councils, it is the trustworthy record of God's revelation, completely truthful in all it affirms. It's been faithfully preserved and proves itself true in human experience. The scriptures have come to us through human authors who wrote as God moved them in the language and literary forms of their times. God continues by the illumination of the Holy Spirit to speak through this word to each generation and culture. The Bible has authority over all human life. It teaches the truth about God, his creation, his people, his one and only son, and the destiny of humankind. It also teaches the way of salvation and the life of faith. Whatever is not found in the Bible, nor can be proved by it, is not to be required as an article of belief or as necessary to salvation. Don't let someone convince you that there's something new that needs to be added. The Bible is complete. It's the living Word of God. Today, if you are making some notes as we're beginning, before we look into more of the text for the day, I would want you to make note of these things, or, um, of these three things as we begin. One is this God is eternal. God is eternal. God always has always existed. Even prior to creation of the universe, God has been. God is eternal. I can't get my mind around that. He always has been, He always will be. Second, God created all that exists. God created everything that exists. And creation, all of it is intentional and it has purpose. God is eternal. God created all things. Think about it. God is eternal. He's not bound by time. He created it. He's not bound by it. Um, Third, you and I are made in the image of God. You and I are made in the image of God. Mankind has been created by the hand of God, and we are unique. You are unique. Some people might think of me, I'm glad you're unique, Phil, because I don't want another one. But we're unique in this, friends. We're unique in that God, when God created us, he put us in position to steward all that he created. 
Think about this. Adam and Eve, they, they were naming the animals. God created us in this unique position to steward all that he's entrusted to us. Your life, my life has purpose. This is Sanctity of Life Sunday where we pause and we pray and we go, every life has purpose. Even a life that is taken before it was supposed to be taken has a purpose. We are created in the image of God. We are made for God's glory. We are made to give glory to God. Glory is the full weight or measure of all that God is. You and I are created so people might see and know that there is a God in heaven. In Genesis, in the first chapter, if you want to go there, we're going to be in the book of Genesis this morning. Um, first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. I want to look at the first uh, few verses of that and, uh, and share those with you. So Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters and separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky gather to to one place and let the, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and he gathered waters and he called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth, on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and the Every living thing and moving thing which the water, with which the waters teems according to their kinds. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. Livestock creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. In the beginning, God created. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be light. Gospel of John begins with John calling us to be mindful that God is the creator. And he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and him was life. And that life was the light of men. John says, in the beginning, God always has been, and he is only true. God is our creator. The Lord is the giver of your life. I want to think about those words for a moment. Um, I appreciate what Michelle shared this morning on, on the development of life and how precious that is. But think about those words God created. I remember as a little kid, my grandparents reading me from a children's Bible book and, and, and reading about their creation. And I remember the, the first page in that book in, in Genesis, it says, it talked about God creating, and the picture was just black. I remember as a little kid thinking, God created something out of nothing. So important that we teach our kids, they remember things. I'm excited some of our teens right now have been, they're, they're making a video that will be produced about their creation. And we're on day four, I think, somewhere in there. So we'll see how it goes. The production will be released, and you'll uh, hopefully be thrilled with it. It's, it's, they're having a great time doing it. But in doing it, it's causing them and us to think about God created. God is our creator. God is eternal. God is not bound by time or space. His understanding has no limits. God spoke, and for him to speak was for something to be. God is our creator. He brought into existence that which was nothing. God took what was formless and empty and created it with intentionality and with purpose. God took, took things and created order in the midst of chaos. He brought um, separated land from water and all of, all of those things. God is our creator. And all God has created, all God created was good. The Bible says the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was active in creation. The Holy Spirit is active today. God, our Creator, continues to create to this day, bringing light and darkness. Remember King David? A couple weeks ago, we talked about King David's prayer, confession, and repentance. And King David said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, a steadfast spirit within me, created me a clean heart. You know, God is working, creating today. God brings life, but God also works in us. God created in me a new heart when I came to him. I said, Lord, I need you as my Savior. He created a new heart. And how many times in my life has he renewed a steadfast spirit? Because my walk has had times of failure, and I'm sure yours has too, and we've had to come before God in confession and find that he's renewing us and creating a new renewed heart in us. Do you ever marvel at God's creation? Do you ever sing songs like we sang this morning and think, man, God, I don't know how you did all this, but I'm glad you did. You ever read something about science and think, and find all that science doesn't know because God is the author of it all. Our understanding is limited. Your understanding is limited because we're not God. There are times that I look at my, look at my kids, and yesterday I was with Jesse, and I was with Caleb, and, and Caleb's wife, Lindsay, and we, we had dinner together. Sometimes I look at my kids, and I, and I, think, um, I think, wow, they just did something that, that I did and that I do. Or I think, I look at them, and I think, Oh, man, they're starting to look at me in that area. Sorry. Right? Or you ever catch yourself, you're saying something, you'll say, you'll say a phrase or something, and you'll go, oh, my dad said that. Right? You think about, the, why, why is that? Well, because we're family, there's the same DNA in us, but there's image from our parents that we bear. The Bible says that you and I are made in the image of God. God made you with intention. He made you with purpose. He made you and I to walk in relationship with him. We know Adam and Eve walked in the garden to the cool evening with the Lord's talking with them. 
In other words, as we grow in the Lord Jesus Christ, as we grow more and more, our lives should become more and more about God's glory being made known. In other words, the, God's image should become more evident within us. Do you know when you come to Jesus, when you, when you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, there's a part of you, your, uh, your very essence, the, your spirit that comes alive with him? And God has made us to reflect his glory. The, historically, the, um, shortly after Jesus died and rose again and the church was being established, they began to call followers of Jesus Christians because they reminded them of Jesus. They're doing things that remind me of Christ. God's image was evident on them. They didn't say they were Jesus. They said they remind me of things Jesus said and Jesus did. So they called them Christians. Now we know, uh, we, we know that Adam and Eve sinned. We know that sin entered the picture. We know we live in the broken world. And we're, in a couple weeks, we're going to dig deeper into the whole problem of sin. But even so, we know that's true. But we need to be mindful today. I want to ask you to be mindful of the fact that you are created in God's image. And that the Bible that you hold, or the Bible that you bring up on your app, however you read your Bible, God's Word tells us and it shows us that God has been working since the beginning to make us aware of His redeeming work. His story is a story of redemption and of His redemptive presence at work in this world in our lives. And creation is about God's glory. It's about God being made known. God saw all that he made. And the Bible says it was very good. The sixth day. And chapter 2 begins with this. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. And so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. I want you to think about that for a minute. God, who is creator of all, who is author of all life, who, who spoke the entire universe into existence, the Bible says he rested. Do you think he was tired? Probably not. He's God. But he rested. He was giving us something. He was telling us something. Creation is intended for God to be glorified. Creation is given with purpose. And he's calling us and he gives us this, this reminder that we are to be a people of worship. And we are to be uh, um, people who give God glory. God has given us uh, worship, he's called us to be people who come and gather in his presence. God delights in our worship. We find joy when we marvel at all God is, at all that he has done. So I want to ask you to think about some things. I want to ask you some questions. Um, when do we worship? When do we worship? Do we worship only on Sunday? Or how do we worship? Is, worship? is worship singing three songs and doing a prayer and maybe singing one or two more and then if we're really moved, we sing some of it a cappella? Is that worship? Is worship something that only takes place when I'm gathered with a few people? Is that worship? Worship is giving glory to God. Worship is understanding that God is my creator. Worship is being in God's presence. You ever watch uh, ever, uh, a toddler that just likes being with, with mom or with dad or with grandpa or grandma? And that and a toddler will sometimes just want to be with them. They don't have anything to say to them or anything else. And they may, may be in their, in their bedroom playing with a toy and and grandpa or grandma or mom or dad or whoever may be sitting out in the other room 
And that little toddler all of a sudden pick up that toy, carry it into the room, and just sit right down at the feet of their loved one and just sit there with them and keep playing with the toy. Why? Because they want to be in God's presence. And I think about those kind of images, and I think, you know, I just want to be in the presence of God. I want to be close to Him. I want to worship Him. Worship is when we gather um, and we want to come before God, whether we're on our own or in a group of people, we know that we are in God's presence. So when do we worship? What does our worship include? Well, it includes praise, right? Our worship includes praise. What else might worship include? Someone tell me. Huh? Our time. We, can, we spend time in worship. What else? Prayer. Gratitude. Surrender. Prayer, gratitude, surrender, our time. Worship includes all these things and more. We come before God in prayer. Do you know that we worship God in our tears of sorrow? We worship God in our pain. My most intimate times in worship and most meaningful times of worship have come in my times where I understand the least of what's happening in my life. Most of the, we, we go to the book of Psalms often when we want to worship God, right? You know, 70% of the Psalms are laments, the blues. Because when we, when we know that we're struggling, we, we're drawn to want to be with our Creator. I need to be in the presence of God. I want to worship Him. I need to tell him about my sorrow. I need to tell him about my grief. I need to tell him about my hurt, the struggle. I need to tell him I don't understand what's going on. Even I, I might even need to say things like, God, what are you doing? And that can be a time of worship. I want to encourage you, church, in a weird way today. I've had conversations sometimes with people who will say things like, I'm just in a dry season. Ever been in a dry season? I have. And I feel like I can't even read my Bible. I feel like I can't even pray. I'm just in a dry season. I don't know what's wrong with me. God has not left. God knows you're in a dry season. And just to sit in, in a quiet space and acknowledge to God, I'm in a dry season, is an act of worship. It is to be in God's presence. Worship does not mean that I'm singing a song. It does not mean that I'm saying anything. It does not mean that I'm reading anything. Worship is, I know I need to be in your presence, God, because you are God. And you know, God is, is okay with our silence. And God teaches us a lot in those dry times. And he has not left us. And it's in those dry times someone said our worship is time. Sometimes the best thing we can do if we are in a dry season is just say, you know what, even though I'm not feeling anything right now, I'm going to spend this time thinking about God. God's given us the gift of his word. And I, and, and I encourage you to, to begin to try to practice of of reading the Word and then praying that Scripture into your life. God is a God of grace and He is a God of truth. And there is always this tension between grace and truth. You know, there's part of me that says, God, you're a gracious God. Just extend to me grace all the time and I'll just keep doing what I want to. But there's no victory in that, right? God says, but there's truth. I'm calling you to surrender. I'm calling you to change. I'm calling you to follow me. I'm calling you to follow me when it's hard. And God is faithful. And God will lead us to places where, where he's calling us to grow and he'll shape us. I want to close today. I want to look at a few verses in a passage I go to in Ephesians often. It's in the New Testament. Ephesians. 
find First and Second Corinthians. It goes First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians I want to look at the second chapter. The Apostle Paul writes some things that I want us to, to hear and to reflect on and to make them part of our prayer this morning. He writes this. He says, As for you, verse 1 of chapter 2, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. As Paul writes, he says, look, we, we all of us, at one time, we, we just simply we weren't alive. We were lost in just doing our own thing. We were lost in our transgressions. We were lost in trying to find our own way on our own without God. And then he says, and that's still true today. There are, there are those who are simply trying to find their own way. They're trying just to gratify their own cravings. Looking for a solution is what he's saying. But he says this in verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. So Paul says, even when you were at your worst, even when you were hopelessly lost, you were not hopeless because God has this rich mercy and he's made us alive with Christ. And here's how he did it. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has created you with a purpose in his image. And God has made it possible for us to have a right relationship with him because of the cross of Christ, where he defeated death and sin in the grave, and you can know him. He rose again and he's coming back. And we are made in the image of God to reflect God. I want to close this way today. I want to pray the last part of that passage as we close. If you're able, let's stand. Uh, if you need to sit, I encourage you to sit. But let's receive this as a prayer today. Heavenly Father, we know that it is only by your grace that we have been saved through our faith. Lord, we thank you for the cross of Christ. Lord, we thank you for this gift that is from you. Lord, we know that we are saved not by our works. There is nothing that I have done, nothing any of us have done to earn the right to be saved. In fact, Lord, we don't deserve it, but because of your grace and your mercy, we are saved. And Lord, I pray that we would all know what it is to have placed our faith in you and to know that you have forgiven us and that we walk with you. And Lord, I pray that we would all be reminded that we have all been created with intention and with purpose. We are your workmanship. And you created us to bring glory to your name. And Lord, I pray that we would, as we think about your grace and your truth and your creation, that we would say, Lord Jesus, help me to reflect your glory today. Help me to speak your truth and love today to whomever I come in contact with. Help me to seek you with everything I do. Lord, uh, I, I love you. Lord, we thank you for this church. Lord, I pray that we would all know uh, to the core of our being that we are made in your image. Help us to seek you today in, in all these things. Pray that you be with our classes that meet, that your Holy Spirit would move in hearts. And Lord, we give you the praise now in Jesus' name. Amen.